Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and I have just a couple of announcements. The first one is, I cannot believe where the year has gone, but it is Thanksgiving next week and if you don't feel like cooking, you can order a meal, all of your meals from Wellness Farm Foods and we will ship them any place in the country. Um, I know that Thanksgiving is not a holiday that I'm particularly fond of cooking for since we have, I mean, work goes right up through Wednesday and all that sort of thing. So I always enjoy the fabulous food from Wellness Farm Health. And I have to tell you, when I bring it to parties where carnivores are, all the carnivores scarf down our food. My dad and I eat this diet. Uh, they scarf down our plant-based fare um, sometimes first. We have to make sure we're first in the line to get to it. So. Anyway, that's one thing. Second thing is we uh, now are taking enrollments for the new vaccination education course. Um, it's called Vaccinations, What Every Health Provider and Consumer Should Know. And this is very important. There's a lot of rhetoric going around with vaccines, a lot of people screaming and hollering. The emotions run very high, and this is a very serious issue. It should be looked at objectively, and that's what we're doing. Nothing. Just show me the science. That's all we're going to talk about is science from reputable journals and, and then put you in a position to make the right decisions for you and your family and um, you can register until December 1st and save a couple hundred dollars on the course uh, it has been developed by Dr. Kathy Waller who is a former immunology professor from Ohio State University so, uh, and then right along the line of educational programs, winter semester is up. It's posted on the website, wellnessforminstitute.org, and you can see all the fabulous classes we're offering this year, uh, including the Diet and Lifestyle Intervention course again. So doctors, nurses, dietitians, you need continuing education credits. You got 39 of them for taking this course. So I'll let you check all that stuff out. You're always welcome to email me at pampopper at msn.com if you want some more information. Okay, so first we're gonna talk about fish oil. A few studies have shown that fish oil is beneficial for health, but um, most uh, have not. And lots of articles about this in the Health Brace Library. I'm not gonna regurgitate all of that for you here. Um, but in spite of the fact that there's not a whole lot of evidence, 95% of holistic and integrative practitioners report that they recommend them to patients, and 81% of those practitioners report that they recommend the supplements to treat inflammation. But a new study shows that fish oil supplements are ineffective for lowering inflammation. The study included 261 people who were enrolled in a randomized, double-blind, double placebo-controlled clinical trial. The subjects took either a fish oil supplement that had 1,400 milligrams of EPA and DHA daily or a placebo. Supplementation did result in a 64% increase in EPA and DHA, DHA for the treatment group. Um, that was serum, EPA, and DHA. But it had no effect on serum C-reactive protein or interleukin-6, which are markers for inflammation. The results were um, consistent in subgroup analysis, and EPA and DHA supplementation did not even lower ex vivo production of four pro-inflammatory cytokines. In other words, fish oil did not reduce inflammation, but it did make for some prettier blood work. And the fact that it didn't reduce inflammation, the, one of the most common reasons for prescribing it is concerning. Now, critics have pointed out that the study included healthy adults and that sicker people might have benefited more from uh, the supplementation. But large meta-analyses that have been done previous to this just simply haven't borne that out, and many have concluded that an increased risk of cancer could not be ruled out. Most adults have abnormal markers for inflammation, so there's good reason to be concerned about this, even though the fish oil pills didn't work to solve the problem. Um, that inflammation is a result of a couple of things. One is when you carry extra weight, body fat cells pump out inflammatory cytokines, which will increase inflammation levels. And then a lot of people in our culture eat a high animal foods uh, diet, and animal foods are very concentrated sources of something called arachidonic acid, which is a precursor to inflammatory prostaglandins or hormones. And so the best way to address this inflammation issue, and it's a serious one because it's one of the common denominators of just about any disease that you want to talk about, is to lower the animal food consumption and um, also lose weight. That's what to do. Much better than fish oil pills. 
All right. So this is kind of a fun article. It goes to um, uh, environmental cues for eating. Uh, Brian Wansink, you've heard me talk about him before. He's the author of Mindless Eating, which is a great book on why people eat what they eat. I use it as a textbook in some classes that I teach. And um, in addition to the book, he and his colleagues have authored over 100 papers about why people make the decisions they make about food. Um, Wansink and his colleagues have reported a lot about environmental influences, uh, the, the cues for eating, the, the types of choices we make, the quantities, etc. And uh, they now report that the type of food that is out on the kitchen counter in plain sight is a predictor of the BMI of the person who owns the kitchen. So they analyzed, uh, one sink and his, and his buddies analyzed 210 women in their kitchens in Syracuse, New York, and showed that women who kept fresh fruit on the counter were more likely to be normal weight than women who had snacks and cereals in a visible place. In kitchens where calorie-dense foods were visible and easy to grab, the BMIs of the people who lived in those kitchens was uh, much higher. Wansink says, and I think this is true, that foods are often picked up in a moment of hunger or boredom or just walking by, which is why calorie-dense foods, he says, should be in a place out of plain view. Um, and he says normal weight women are more likely to have a designated cupboard for junk foods and calorie-dense foods where they don't look at it all the time. And also, normal weight women are less likely to buy bigger packages of these types of foods. And uh, just as a side note, one of the things that I've noticed about myself is that um, it takes me about four days to eat a bag of pretzels and it doesn't matter the size of the bag of pretzels if I buy the ones from Trader Joe's that are like 12 ounces I eat them in four days if I get a pound of pretzels someplace else I eat them in four days so needless to say best thing for me no pretzels in the house but the point is the bigger the package the more we eat and I do that too the author stated, quote, proximity and visibility of food have been shown to contribute to the quantity of food consumed at settings such as workplaces, cafeterias, and school lunchrooms. The author suggests that people could lose weight if they just got rid of junk foods and replaced them with healthier options. I mean, that's kind of obvious, but Wan Singh said, we've got a saying around our lab, if you want to be a skinny person, do what skinny people do. If skinny people make their homes slim by design, he calls it, by clearing the counters of everything but the fruit bowl, it won't hurt us to do the same. Now, I think putting the junk food in the counters, in the cupboards and away from plain view, that's a step in the right direction. But I actually think you have to take things a step further, which is to just get that stuff out of your house. I mean, um, enjoy snack foods and chocolate or whatever it is that your um, passions are. Uh, for special occasions and holidays and other than that, just keep it out of the house and out of the office. Um, when junk foods are available, they call your name from the kitchen, and I think most of us get in a lot of trouble when we play willpower games with ourselves in the kitchen. And by the way, um, one of the best books written about this topic is called Change Anything. It's from an author group in Utah. And uh, this group, it's a best practices study, uh, is the subject of the book, and they wrote about people who were successful in changing anything ranging from uh, overeating and weight gain to career ending habits to turning around your academic career etc and they basically said willpower has little to do with changing anything it's really much more setting up your environment to support the habits that you want to practice so um, if you were to visit my house right now you would see the fruit on the counter there are no pretzels or chocolate laying on the counter nor are those things hidden away someplace else because if those things were there, I'd be thinking about eating them while I'm talking to you during this video clip. So best to just keep them out of the way and out of my sight and out of my house. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it. And I will be back to you on Thursday with more news.